A few episodes ago, I decided to spend most of my time going forward to grind for the giant warhammer. It is one of the last few things that I need to get before I head over to raids. And the dragon warhammer is most likely going to be the most time consuming grind out of everything that's left. It is a 1 in 5,000 drop, so it's nice to get started a bit early, you know, while I still have a few smaller things left. On the last episode, I did transfer to and killed a few forecasts to get myself the Alvis Assembler. It is a requirement to get anyways, but getting it a bit early helps me with the Shaman grind, as the extra accuracy and range strength helps kill the Shans faster. And also, I get to save myself on Mytho Darts and not have to pick them up anymore, which further makes the Shaman grind a little less annoying. Every bit of comfort counts. See ya. Alright, so I just did my uh, first trip with the assembler, so I am getting a little bit more kills per hour just because I'm not spending no time picking up the darts. Yeah, I would say probably in the excess of like 20 more kills, 10 to 20 more kills. So that's actually quite, you know, quite a big deal difference because over time after several trips, you know, I'm, I'm like saving so much time getting like 100 kill extra every few hours. 3,113. That's what I'm feeling right now. That's what I'm feeling. Wow! I've killed way more than I thought. Oh my god. I've, I'm already at 3.6k. Okay. I was 500 kills off, basically. Alright. Damn, dude. Uh, let me see. In four more days, I'll have 5,000 KC if I, if I keep going like this. I'm I'm guessing if you know shit hits the fan, maybe ten thousand kills. Oh, ninety hit points, really? I was that close to ninety hit points. Okay. Damn, this is getting. This is potentially no. I don't think range would no. There's no way. I actually have three range levels, so even if I go dry as fuck here and I get ninety nine range, I'll probably have ninety nine hit points, just because of shamans probably before then. You cannot underestimate how much money in terms of physical GP you make as shamans. It's actually ridiculous. Uh, for reference, I typically stay uh, at shaman's temple for about 200 or so kills. And in the process, I typically get around uh, 600 to 700,000 physical GP per kill, not including you know the value of other stuff like seeds and whatnot. That is a lot. That's uh, We're talking... 3,000 to 4,000 physical GP per kill on average. I can actually fund the supplies that I would spend here in terms of, uh, let's say, darts. And yeah, man, you basically get a ton of money. If you go dry, at the very least, you have a lot of money to look forward to, which can be spent on a bunch of different things in the future, especially construction. There we go. Just hit a million GP this trip, dude. That's insane, dude. That's my personal record for uh, 200 kills. After a lot of experimentation, testing the three different rooms in the Shaman Temple to find out which one was the best one, I have concluded with certainty that the middle room is a bit better than the other two rooms. So the amazing thing about the middle room is that the two Shamans spawn exactly in the middle and they don't spawn next to the walls that you have to use to stop them from jumping. So the flaw with the west room is that there is a shaman that spawns on the western wall and uh, eventually you just can't stay there because it will eventually, you know, try to melee you, right? So you have to like run away. The other shaman in the room also spawns on the tip of the southern wall, which means you can't stay there either for too long. So eventually you're just going to have to keep switching between the sides, which is a bit more work. And also the room in the east has a similar problem where one of the walls that can stop them from jumping, one of the shaman spawns on the southern side. So at some point you're going to have to move away because again, it's going to melee you. The middle room, amazing. None of them spawn on any of the walls. So really, you can just stay on one wall the entire time. And the wall that you can stay at pretty much the entire time is the western wall. So there's super minimal moving. The only time you have to really move is to pick up the coins and the other drops. I also really like the fact that the western wall in the middle room is a bit longer because there is like an extra gap that uh, adds on to the western wall so that means you can actually uh, kite around the western wall a bit longer. So it's very rare that I'll actually move away from the western wall. Sometimes I might use the southern wall in the middle room but honestly you're going to be staying at the western wall like 99% of the time only to pick up drops when you have to leave. 
So yeah, this room will actually be a bit more comfortable and probably will get you a few more kills an hour. Not by much, but it adds up, I suppose. What the hell is this shit? Red Dehive Vambraces next to my Rune Warhammer? Okay, buddy. Is that, is that perhaps the ultimate troll? Alright, so I just opened up a bunch of crystal keys. A lot of them came from shamans recently. You get a ton of these, a uh, loop halves and two taps. So I need to go ahead and make some more skilling necklaces just because I use them all the time for the farming guild. So yeah, it's just convenient to not have to charge so much. But I don't think I need any more jewelry after this though. I'm pretty good on jewelry. I only really need some more farming guild tellies and... Uh, I guess I'll make some combat bracelets too while I have it now because translator to uh, fountain is amazing because I can just recharge any type I want over there so it's really convenient. So I'll have some more extra teleports. Alright so here's all of the dragon stones that I have had and turned into jewelry. So we got really good stuff here. 46 glories, 28 scaling necklaces, the main things I'm going to use. Uh, occasional combat bracelet for some clue scrolls. And uh, I'll probably end up charging these at some point. 14 rings of wealth also for mainly just clue scrolls and stuff like that too. So I've been thinking about wanting to trade my prayer because I've accumulated a lot of bones here. Let me show you guys. 1.7k big bones, 500 dragon bone baby ones, 1.3k dragon bones, uh, some wyvern bones, and some superior dragon bones. So I want to at least uh, get rid of these first four because I can get some really good prayer levels. It'll help me sustain my uh, prayer pots and restores a bit more, so that way I can, you know, be more efficient with them at stuff like shamans. And also, the completion of Dragon Slayer 2 gave me the Locator Orb, which allows me to suicide the Wilderness Ulcer super quickly. So that's totally going to be worth it. Now, there is going to be one uh, thing that I need to do besides that, and that's to buy the Edge for Respawn. It's like 5 mil, but yeah, it's totally worth it. I'm getting so much money from shamans right now that it's really, really worth it. Because um, having the edge spell respawn for the prayer training method at the wilderness altar, super, super nice. So let me go ahead and talk to her real quick. I'm going to do it. Let's go. Ooh. <laughs> Woo, man. I'm a, I feel like a baller, so it's not too big of a hit, honestly. So I'm going to get started on some prayer training really soon. And uh, yeah, I have all my teleports ready. Uh, burning, amulet, and all that. So that's going to be perfect. Alright, so I'm about to do some prayer training tonight if I'm not doing Wyvern AFK. So this is my setup. Pretty simple crystal shield for that nice defensive bonuses. A Torag's body for nice defensive bonuses from PKers. And my burn amulet for teleports. My locator orb. So... I have four items to protect basically, so I'll always be having protect item on. So when I do die, I'll keep everything but the bones. But I should have used all the bones by the time I get that done. So yeah, let's go and get started. Lava maze, here we go. Hopefully there's uh, no PKers on the way. Let's uh, do big bones first. I'm not too worried about dying with these just because, you know, it's big bones. Like whatever. So... So I decided to up it up a bit here, so instead of bringing just one inventory of big bones, I'm going to bring four inventories of big bones, just because it's not really worth doing one inventory method with big bones, just because they're not that significant. So if I die with it, it's like whatever. I'm not really, you know, going to sweat about losing these. But yeah, man, let's just go ahead and do it this way, speed up the process, I have a lot of bones to go through. Alright, so I'm spam clicking the uh, big bones, and it's not even that bad. It's 100k an hour doing a uh, 4 inventory method. So yeah, it's definitely worth using for sure, even at my level. 100k an hour, it's not bad for big bones. <laughs> Shit is sketchy as fuck. <laughs> Yo, oh my god, dude. This guy spent like 5 minutes outside uh, near the, the NPC guy. Like just sizing this place up, checking it out, and then he and he finally comes into the altar, bro. You're right about that, bro. <laughs> oh, nice, seventy-three prayer. All right, so here's the deal: if I use the locator orb, the crystal shield, and even my Tarak's body actually loses charges from the damage it takes, so I just take it off when I'm suiciding, so that way I don't lose charges on this. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. It's just big bones, though, so I don't really care. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, the other guy died. Ah, what is this guy taking my big bones, man? Goddamn. Yo, my six big bones are there. He took my noted bones. Goddamn it, man. Man, some random cucks trying to kill me for my... Ah, god dang it, man. Yo, did they pick up my bones? Oh my god, they didn't pick up my bones! Idiots! <laughs> they didn't pick up my bones! My 50 bones are on the ground, and I still have my 8 unknown bones. Yes! This is a 200 IQ strat, oh my god. Just train your prayer with big bones here, oh my god. There we go, 74 prayer. Ooh, now I can activate rigor. Come on, I'm trying to click my bones. What's this guy even doing? Ah, oh, there's a- yes! The VKers are fighting each other. This is amazing. Alright, on my last inventory of big bones, we get a fight. Alright, I used all my big bones. And as a result, I managed to get... About... Two prayer levels. Which is really nice. I still got some really good bones left. You know, much better than the big bones. Man, I just want to see who who kills who. One, one's 119, the other one's 123. We got Salad Robe, Tribrit it looks like, versus some guy that's basically just hybrid melee and range. Oh, we got a Dagger Poke from uh, Salad Rover. What was that? Oh, yeah man, a Tribrit versus a hybrid. And this person is keeping it simple. Uh, just Rune Crossbow with an HES. Ooh, but this salad rover is pretty. Oh my god, the Rambo. Oh my god, it's over, dude. Now, that's what you call a tri bear right there, dude. Nice. 75 prayer. Oh my goodness. Staff of water. No, don't drop your bones, man. Use it. You should have used all his bones first before he went bye bye. Alright, 77 prayer, guys. Oh, 76 prayer. What am I saying? 140k is. 77. I have about 1,000 Dragon Bones left, so that's technically 2,000 with this altar. Alright, 77 Prayer. Nice. In two days, I unlocked both Rigor and Augury. Oh, there it is, 78 Prayer. And is that 115 Combat? Yes. There it is, 115 Combat. So 115 Combat is actually a super important, uh, combat level barrier that I needed to reach before I would start doing any of solo raids because if you're actually not over 115 combat or at 115 combat you suffer a major uh, points penalty which directly impacts how often uh, you would get unique items and uh, resource drops in general so if you are under 115 you lose I think it's somewhere around 30 to 40 percent of your potential points so you're only getting 60 to 70% of the points that you would normally get. I knew that by the time I got all of the uh, base combat style requirements of phase 1, I would probably be pretty close to 115 combat, but I definitely needed to do some prayer training to get there. So this penalty no longer applies in groups. If you are uh, actually under 115 combat, but one of your teammates is over 115 combat, the raid will treat everybody in that raid as over 150 combat and everyone's gonna get maximum points it's just because I'm soloing I'm the only person so it has to scale with me and I have to make sure I'm 150 combat so solo is a little weird but that is super important we have the bare minimum combat level achieved so that we can get maximum points at raids hey we got ourselves a PKer trying to kill me okay understandable that's fine Holy shit, perfect. Perfect way to die. Dude, we, they had a whole two-man team. Well, I won this time, though. This is by the door. Oh, another PK. 42. Oh, this guy's probably killing the Telewine grabbers or whatever. We're chilling. Uh, great, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, what the hell? What? Where'd that person go? Yo, man, screw off, mate. Let me go. Ah, great. All that. Yes, perfect. <laughs> I got the redemption in there. That was amazing. Yes, perfect. This is the last demon after kill. I'm just gonna pack up. I have some extra insult heads, but whatever. I don't really need to worry about it now. 
because 80 prayer is all I need. I don't got anything else resource wise that can actually bump me to 81. So 80 prayer, that's beautiful, beautiful. All right, so it's time to pack up and uh, get out of here, man. That's awesome. Okay, that's a little distraction thing here, but definitely worth doing because, man, I'm going to be saving so many uh, restore potions, prayer potions during the shaman grind and whatnot. So from this whole prayer training grind, which was all the resources saved up, it got me all the way from 72 prayer all the way to 80 prayer, which means I'm going to get two extra prayer points for every prayer pot or restore potion dose so that's huge every potion i'm drinking i'm getting eight more prayer points back so that's amazing i bring like 16 restores uh per shaman trip uh right so i'm getting myself 120 extra prayer points per trip now so that's amazing save myself over a prayer potion or restore potion every single trip